in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed <laughs> while I was preparing this note I was laughing I was already imagining some of you you know, one day, I, I, am I, sometimes I feel like I'm a clown on stage. When I'm trying to be serious, some of you are really laughing. Likewise, ye husbands, don't say I'm not married, you will be married, so listen. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, who, the wives, okay, if you read the preceding verses, dwell with them according to all the brothers read it one two read likewise who are the husbands likewise us we men we will dwell with them according to so the bible says you live with a woman according to it didn't say according to law are you following me now look when it comes to women you oh, you can coexist according to how many of you have roommates that you love, but you know next session, you are certainly not going to stay together? Do you hate them? But there is no knowledge. No wonder it's ladies that are raising their hands. The brothers can manage, the ladies cannot take it again. Because it takes knowledge to dwell with a woman. Ladies can be as complicated as... laptops I was thinking of what to say <laughs> my mind was booting hallelujah praise God now I want to talk about a few listen please what I want to talk about right now is very important please if you are sleeping now, it's the time to wake up. Listen very carefully with your eyes, your spirit, your mind, whatever you can use to listen. I want to talk about something. Everybody write, emotional obsession. Very interesting word. We're going to discuss it. Emotional obsession. We're talking of maintaining your relationship now or maintaining your marriage. Look up, please. 90% of relationships, including Christian relationships, 90% of believers enter relationships among other reasons because of what I call emotional obsession. You know what an emotional obsession is? An emotional obsession is that, that feeling, huh, brother, that is like, how do I describe it now? Songs of Solomon says, love is stronger than death. That's the kind of feeling. Where out of your whole 24 hours, the best is the five minutes you were able to speak with the sister. So two guys, one brother, one lady. Quick, Ella. Come and stand quickly. Ooh. Abel. Appreciate them quickly. Please come and stand. My brother, stand. So, Abel. Elijah, sorry. It doesn't matter. I'm, uh, it's an example. Am I calling him? Elijah. Oh, yeah. Now, Elijah has been attending Koinonia. He knows that she's in prayer band. And now, 
Elijah is praying. Elijah is before him. Elijah cannot sleep. You wake up by three and you're just sitting down. Elijah, what is wrong? He said, truly, me too. I don't know. You call every one of your roommates Ella. Sorry, um, Ella, Sam. Sorry. This, this is called, it's not wrong. Are you listening to me? It's not wrong. Emotional obsession. Or she, she, she wakes up by 3 o'clock in the night and picks her biro and on her pillow, she's now drawing flowers. People are sleeping. There's no light. You are using your phone. Drawing flowers. Oh, we know it. Oh, we don't need to come to your hostel to know it. Then you draw a hand, Elijah's hand, collecting the flower. And that's that drive. You come for fellowship, you are sweating. You've not seen Ella. Ah, Sam is, you are covering my view, Sam. You are just looking at Ella. If peradventure you see Elijah, you come early, but you sit down outside. You are waiting until the arrival of Ella, and then you start laughing. That's when your, your praise and worship becomes living active, full of life, full of power. They say, greet your neighbor. You've not greeted the people around you. You've gone, hello, how are you? Even you can't help it. You can't, it's a fuel that you cannot quench. Hallelujah. Now, listen. And this is most for ladies because, you see, it takes a long time for ladies to arrive there. Guys get that easily. As easy as it comes, it just goes. You are in a dinner and you look at Ella and you are like, Hey! God, talk to me or I will talk to you. Talk to me or I will talk. Somebody must talk to somebody this night. Hallelujah. Then one morning you are passing and you just see the lady in the morning. And she just pack her hair anyhow. And you are like, ah! God, please don't say anything. Is this the lady? So, that... This emotional obsession is very impulsive in guys. It takes a while for it to crystallize in ladies, but when it catches them, hallelujah. I'm sure they know themselves. That's why they run away the moment they start seeing any guy because they know what can happen. It's like super glue. You will sit down there when it catches you. Free bus transport going on. Uh, after, after the grace go, you would trek. Not because you, there was no space in the boat. You were waiting. Has she gone? Ross. And the guy, there's always a witness helping you and encouraging you. You say, oh yeah. You just do a series looking at the protocol. <laughs> and he's just looking. And he comes. She's around. Oh yeah, yeah, go down. Emotional obsession. Now, this is powerful because... It's really the distinguishing factor. It's what helps you. Listen. See, look at two guys shaking themselves. I saw two of you. I saw you. And I congratulate you for shaking yourselves. I wish you a safe ride, safe journey. We'll be ready to help you wherever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, please understand. This emotional obsession is very powerful. Because that's what can make a brother to use his money for lunch and buy a recharge card. And be patient. Sleep is drowsing his eyes. But he's praying, waiting for five minutes past twelve. The guy is just trolling. His roommates are starving. They bought Gary. He kept his own money. It's called obsession. Where the energy came from? You were not fasting, but you've not eaten. Yet you are not bothered. You are not bothered. Five minutes past twelve, your eyes will just clear. You just start flashing, hoping that the lady will flash back. Once the lady flashes back, whether MTN, whether there's network or no network, if there is only one spot near your room, even if it's a window, you stand like this. You can stand. Later, you find out, ah, five minutes to four, you are just hissing. This thing is entering you here, coming out here. It's called obsession. At least since it does not happen for every lady or every guy, it helps you. 
to be able to narrow down your decision and it helps you know that you are making a good decision. Are you following me? But the trouble is this. Most guys or most ladies really, that's why about 90% of ladies enter a relationship and two weeks later they feel like going out. You know why? Because emotional obsession cannot be the fuel for your relationship. Are you following me now? Let me tell you something. Every relationship, including between you and Jesus Christ, every kind of relationship, at a point must take faith and a factor other than just your emotions to sustain it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Now, hold on. Two of you are going out. Let's assume it has worked for you now. Finally, doesn't matter what happened in between. The long and short is now this has worked. They are going out. Suddenly, this brother now starts reducing his time from one one hour, forty-five minutes, fifteen minutes, and it just stops at the ten minutes mark. And this lady is busy asking herself, "Come on, is that what is happening in your own relationship?" Because I don't understand these guys. So guys are very funny. Before we started going out, he used to call me for 30 minutes. But now I, don't, I can't understand why it's only 2 or 3 minutes. Let me tell you something. Most ladies love the euphoria and the excitement. You took her to Mr. Biggs every week. You ensured that money came out. Faith was working. Every koinonia message of faith produced for you. You forced it to work. There was one 1,000 every week here marked for maintaining this process. But now that it has happened, you have suddenly gassed out. That energy is not there. One day the lady just tries and says, ah, how about that chicken? Have you eaten Mr. Big Chicken for a while? Say, oh, please, don't. We're trying to conserve resources right here. As if you didn't know it before. So, the, the issue of emotional obsession, listen, this is why many relationships, this is why Western people cannot stay three days or one week. Are you following me now? As quickly as they enter, they pack their loads and go. The reason is because the only factor was emotional obsession. So the guy entered and you saw this posh guy. Eh? He, was, he was a Lamborghini that dropped him, ladies. Don't pretend like what I'm saying is not making sense. The guy just comes out and now you are just looking. What they call it? Tall, dark and handsome. Very nice guy. And now you are looking, pinching your friend. Immediately the guy says, can he come for Before he finishes, you say, ah, oh, my pleasure. Two weeks later, I hate this guy. Guys are wicked. I hate them. Calm down. This night, we're going to explain what is really wrong. What's the problem? Everybody say emotional obsession. Emotional obsession is good, but there is a level. If you allow that to govern your relationship or to show whether your relationship is working or not, you're going to get into trouble. Ask any married man. A time comes where what is fueling them is commitment. It's, it's not just emotional obsession. I saw my father annoy my mother in a way that I knew if he was my mother, that would be it. I would call a pastor and say, we need your attention in this family. Yet my mother would go and cook. The, the, the insult has not finished. Oh. The whole bag bag is still on. And she'll be serving him. When she finishes, she'll sit down and continue the argument. Ah, that, that, that cannot be obsession. Hallelujah. What's your son name? Ah, give us an English name. Okay, Elijah. Let's assume you are Mr. Elijah. Now you finish cheering yourself, cheering yourself, cheering yourself. And people see her and say, ah, Mrs. Elijah, say, how are you? How is your husband? Fine. Yet, you have not finished, though. So you are going back. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters. Many people, especially unbelievers, have based their relationship on that tingly feeling, that feeling of obsession. He's the only person in your world. She's the only person in your world. 
Hallelujah. You have exams tomorrow. By three, you are still together. The exam is by eight. You know you will pass. The lady says, please, I care about you. It's the academics, what? Eh? I, I, I can make it. I've been making it in this school. I've been making it. Don't spoil this atmosphere, right? I, I, it will work. Just don't worry. God is faithful. It's like fire. You can't help it. You can't explain it. Hallelujah. And then for many people, when they get into the relationship or they get married, after a while, there are many names that the guy used to call you. He found Greek and Hebrew names just for you. Shining star. What again? What are the names? Ladies, tell me the names the guys call you. Oh yeah. What? Princess. Every lady's name is princess and angel. They like it. My name is Angel. My name is Princess. So the guys call all of those names. They are, they are ways of trying to manage that fire at the moment. The time you just call and say, Ella, it's time for fellowship. Oh, let's go. Yeah. What is wrong? Say, please, is he your name or not your name? Did your father give you the name? And now Ella is beginning to be worried. Is it that this guy doesn't love me again? Hallelujah. Please, are you following me now? Emotional obsession is good, but relationship cannot be sustained just from the emotional realm. Are you listening to me? Many people believe you get your relationship by that tingly feeling, and you feel the more I keep feeling so obsessed. That's what happens to white men. Two weeks after their relationship, they find out that that fire, that fervency is not there. And they just say, we are not meant for each other. Now they go to look for another person. So, they are allowing that obsession. And this is the problem that some of you have. You are, you are allowing your emotional obsession to be the governing factor. It's like a thermometer. That helps you to know whether your relationship or your marriage is working or not. If that's what you are using, Satan will deceive you big time. Are you listening to me? So, have you understood emotional obsession now? Commitment. Everybody write. Commitment. Okay, leave yourselves again. Look up. This is a very dangerous word. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Commitment is not a very nice word if you understand all that it entails. Let me tell you the truth. Commitment. Many people run away from this word called commitment. Hallelujah. There are many guys today and many ladies today who the reason why they are not in relationship is because they are afraid of commitment. You know what commitment is? Commitment entails sacrifice. Many guys and ladies alike are not willing to pay that sacrifice of commitment. Don't let anybody fool you. Genuine relationship takes sacrifice. You will forgo a lot of things. Some relationships and marriages will even change you. It will change you. Ask our mothers and they will tell you. Any woman who is married here will agree with me. It will change you. I remember years ago, two of our, our members got married. And one time we went for somebody else's wedding. And the lady who got married is a very playful lady. She likes jumping. She can jump up and down and play. Hallelujah. Now she was married. And then she saw some of our other sisters who were not married. They were jumping and playing and you could see it pushing her. I mean, she wanted to join. I saw the way it was eating her up, but no way. There was a ring in her hand that was telling her, behave. Behave. Everybody say commitment entails sacrifice. 
Many people do not want to pay that sacrifice to maintain your relationship, to maintain your marriage. It's what is very difficult for many people. Commitment entails contentment. Everybody say contentment. That's the reason why a man can marry, a woman can marry. There are men and women today who do not know what they want. Ten years after marriage, they are still looking around and changing. They lack contentment. Everybody say contentment. You know what contentment is? Contentment is getting to a point where you derive fulfillment and satisfaction. A Lamborghini is good. A Porsche Sain is good. Hallelujah. What other car again? Tell me one more. Don't mention anything you are not sure of. A Bentley is good. But you see, you can have your CRV and be contented. Are you listening to me? Contentment is very important. The Bible says, Proverbs 31, 31, it says, many daughters have done excellently, but thou excellest them all. Many people like contentment. They lack it in life. That's why nothing can be enough. There are people in life you can never please. They, they always want more. They are never satisfied. Hallelujah. This is the problem with many relationships. There are many relationships that are not contented. And let me tell you something. If you find yourself talking to the guy or the lady, many people like comparing relationships. It's a terrible thing. Never do that. Hold our hands again. Both of you are going out. Say, Elijah, you used to wear nice suits before. Why this one that you are looking like? You are be embarrassing me, oh. It has been paining me today. I'm saying it. Hallelujah. And then suddenly, who is with suit again? Sam, stand up. Now, she's already been dissatisfied with Elijah. Why? Because he didn't used to wear the suit she used to know him to wear before. Do you know that if you do not have contentment, little things can take away your passion? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Suddenly, Sam is coming with his suit. Elijah, you are in trouble. Oh, there's fire on the mountain. Elijah doesn't know. Elijah doesn't know why her commitment is not. She's already seen Sam. See Sam's shirt. Two colors. In her heart, she has met Sam already. Oh. Elijah is there smiling. This is how many people are. Ah, listen, listen, listen. This is very important. In life, can I tell you something? Brothers, get it straight. Even if you get the best lady you believe right now, you will see somebody better than her one day. By every standard, true or false. Sisters, you will see Prince Charming in Koinonia. And may God help you go somewhere else. You will see Prince Charming plus. You will see another Prince Charming that will make you not to sleep. Many of us have this craving that cannot say enough. Not just for relationship. You have a car. You have your small golf. You are starting small. The day you see somebody's bends, it's as if you should squeeze your golf and just throw it away. They say, whose car is this? They say, uh, please, what is your business? Can't you see things and leave it? To come and say, this is my golf. I bought it. It's a fruit of hard work. 500,000 with faith on top is what brought me this golf. One day I would, I would turn this golf into a, a Bentley. But for now, this is golf. This is what many of us, many of us, many of us, you are in a relationship. God bless you, Sam. The lady cannot speak English very well. You too, you came from the village. So it was not a big deal. You just connected. Suddenly, you found out that your CGPA was doing well. And you had a brother who stayed in UK as your roommate. And eventually, metamorphosis, orientation, your, your, your village English is being changed and polished. And now you can speak Queen's English. You, you can speak all the oral English and everything. 
Hallelujah. Suddenly you start looking at the lady and in your mind you are like, ah, God, I don't know how to manage this thing now. Our levels have changed. Though. Hallelujah. Now you don't know how to tell this sister, say, Tor, we came from the same village. Yes. As at the time I met you, two of us were managing in the same realm, but maybe you gave me scholarship. I went to UK for three months or for PhD or this, and now I'm back from the UK, so I can't relate with you again. Nonsense. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was told that, the, what was the name of that Nigerian lady who got Miss Walt? The guy who was going out with her. The moment she qualified for international this and the guy just left. He just knew that there's, there's no point wasting time. This is how many of us are. You lack contentment. You can never say enough. You just turn and you see another lady with nice Rivon. Sister, please stand up. You. Uh -huh. See her beautiful Rivon and you just look. Suddenly you look at her like this. You, you don't do Rivon me. Yeah. It's dangerous because many people think marriage will solve that problem. I assure you it will solve it. That's why you can see a man in a car when he's with maybe his daughter's friend. He's smiling. How are you? Where is your father? But when he's with his wife, you will know. What of the, the fuel? Did they bring it? He's driving, you know. She's saying yes. She's turning her face. Commitment. Everybody say commitment. Number three, commitment entails patience. Patience. One of the greatest shocker for people in relationship is that when they enter, they suddenly find out that all you saw in the guy or the lady is not all there is. It's a root shock. Hallelujah. Commitment entails tolerance. Many of you are not tolerant at all. Look up, please. Now, let me say something. Many people enter relationship with their idea of what it should look like. Hallelujah. Some of you have been so battered by the complex you grew up with that your relationship is a revenge mission. You didn't tell the guy but you have been so psychologically whipped that you have sworn to yourself that this guy is that donkey that Jesus used to ride. He said, brother, are you willing? You kept asking the guy, do you truly love me? The guy didn't understand. He said, yes. You truly love Yes. The brother didn't wait. He said, okay, well, let's do. After one month, nobody tells the brother, the guy is dying. His pocket money has finished savings finish he has sold his laptop he sold his blackberry his other shoe he has sold it in your mind you are saying you've not seen anything no you better keep selling i went through a lot of pain we didn't eat meat in our house i'm revenging so you better there are many ladies that your concept of relationship is a revenge. All the things you've gone through, all the names they call you, you will ride on that brother until he knows that he asks you out. And you believe that your beauty is a consolation for all this pain. One day like a donkey, the brother will just die. The brother will say, this thing, I'm not doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It gets bad when your family joins in the ride. The mother says, let's ride. Oh. You said the guy is purpose driven. Oh yeah, ask him to send some money. You have not married the girl. Yet they said there's one contribution they are doing somewhere. Ah, The brother is saying, do they know me? He says, shall I bring it? How much? 15,000, 5,000, my own transport. The guy now goes to ask Pastor Jake and say, if somebody is in a relationship, and the family is already asking him to bring money. Is he right? 
There are many people. Listen, listen, please. That's why it's good to think well. Lo. It's good to think well. There are some families that are suffering. They are crying for a savior. If you are coming to be that savior, hear God first. Hear God first. There are families that things are not working well. I tell you, things are not working well. They need a man to help them. You, you just came. I'm that man. The mother looked at you the day you came. Can you carry it before they finish? Say yes. You carry it now. You are dying. The load is killing you. You know, we counsel people, so we know the things that we hear. Hallelujah. Ladies, relationship is not a revenge mission. Please. Don't say I've been feeling, com I've, I've suffered inferiority complex. Now this guy, the guy wants to spend 10 minutes with God. You're already angry. The Bible says, whatever God has joined, what is all that? Must he go with you? You came late for a program. He's sitting in front. You are frowning. Why didn't he sit with me? Ah, this is insecurity. Hallelujah. And many of you do not know there are there are there are there are people who when they are in a relationship like this especially certain guys suddenly when you see ella just whisper something to jakes you are not talking to her again oh. what did you tell jakes what did you tell him that you couldn't tell me and the lady said no 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 look at your bible says the bible study what i've been watching you that's how you told this guy the other day you said this and that and that And then same with ladies. A sister comes to ask somebody who has been helping her before you even came. And now the brother just calls her, corners her, gives her 1,000. The lady, she will do as if, oh, ladies can see. They will pretend they didn't see it. Even if they didn't see it, their friends say, oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. You see, they will talk. It's during their regular, regular what? Meeting. The issue will come up. Say, in this relationship, we are not honest with one another. The brother will say, really? Say, we are not honest. God knows. We, there's no honesty in this thing. When people are giving people money, how can there be honesty? Who are the people? Who are the other people they gave? We don't know. Say me, I won't talk again. I don't want trouble. You have already spoken. The trouble is there already. Mm. Hallelujah. Commitment entails responsibility. Listen, look at me. There are many people that love koinonia. You love koinonia. But the moment they say, um, why don't you join a department? Once you hear anything that will commit you, you are finding your way. There is a beautiful dinner coming up. Next week, you are smiling. The price is, aha, uh -huh, commitment. Anything, there are people who, especially guys, brother, if you are still afraid of commitment, don't ever, if you are seeing any lady in your dream, stop it. Stop it. Stop seeing her. Because you are only playing. There are many brothers here. They, they are not committed. Have you seen people like that? There's nothing that is worth their time and their attention. They want to be average in everything. Small here, small here. So long as it doesn't commit me. Hallelujah. You say I'm in prayer department. But you say, what, what kind of members are in prayer department? Are there, me, I'll just be coming when I want to. I hope you are not offended. Why wouldn't you be committed? Everybody wants things that, you say I'm in welfare. But the thing is that, the nature of my life is that there are times when I may not be around. Let me tell you, there is nothing good that happens in life without commitment. Is that correct? You are seeing the worship people standing. This is commitment. 
It's not like they don't know how to see it. Many of you, you run away from anything that will bring responsibility. Hallelujah. You are in a relationship with a lady. One day she just says, sorry, yo, please don't think I'm materialistic. I've not spoken with my mother for a while. Can you help me with five? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She has not mentioned. Uh -huh. See, yo, Joshua Selman said, people should not be disturbing us. You are the kind of, Abba, 500 naira for the charge card. Greedy and stingy people hate commitment because it will require them to give out something. Greedy people. That's why they don't have many friends. They don't like anything. Don't come and say, we're having a get together. Everybody bring money. Uh -uh. Or bring as the spirit leads. They don't like that kind of thing. Commitment. Listen. Every marriage I know of that has worked did not just work because of emotions. Are you listening to me? We are going to be very practical today. Have you seen a man and his wife? A man who has accident, for instance, in the course of their marriage and is now confided on wheelchair and the wife is still standing and they are celebrating their anniversary together and the wife is saying, if God gives us another life, I will marry you. My brother, my sister, this cannot be emotion. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It, it cannot be emotion. The day the guy fought with somebody, they blew his eyes. Suddenly you came and saw somebody with one dark eye. Your friend, he was coming, you just turn and tell your friends, ah, please, let me, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to run somewhere. You are a child, you, have no, you are not ready for marriage. It's this kind of secondary school thing people do. Hallelujah. Many of you feel embarrassed at just any little thing. Rain beats the guy. He just entered somewhere and he's smiling. They're like, ah, this guy is falling my hand. You better, you better stop it. He's taking you out. All the money he has is what can sponsor two of you. The remaining change is 100 or 200. I say, let's enter bus. And now while you are entering, you see other people in their relationship. The guy just turned, just does hunt for you. Out of a sincere heart to just say hello, the lady is just getting uncomfortable in the bus. Ah, sweetheart, what's wrong? Please. You are already embarrassed. You want the guy to go and steal. So that he will make you happy. Many ladies have led our brothers into unbelievable things because they think they want to protect their image. That's why many ladies want guys that they can control. Some of you even say it proudly. You better repent this night. Did you hear what I said? Change. Repent. Say, I like a guy. My own guy. Everybody will sit down. Everybody is talking about their own. My own guy, yo. I can flash him now, now. And he will flash me back. If I tell him I'm not happy right now, it's 15 text messages I will get before I sleep. And if you dare me, I will do it. You are using the guy like a caricature and you are smiling. God is watching. God will pick him and give somebody who deserves him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I assure you. Stop it. Your relationship is not a revenge mission. Yes, we know you suffered growing up. Manage your, your, your predicament. That's why you receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody say, I receive grace to be committed. I receive grace to be committed. Because there are many of you, the kind of man or woman you are looking for has not yet been born. With the, the, the attitude you have, I assure you, the person has not been born. You are not willing to sacrifice anything. You are not willing to be patient. You are not willing to build. Most of us want ready-made relationships. Ready-made. Unfortunately, there's nothing called ready-made relationships. 
You can look at her and like her. You've not seen her when she's angry. You've not seen her when she's broke. You've not seen her when she's under pressure. You too, you have not seen him. He's wearing nice suits now. You don't know what happens when his CGA pierced nose diving. You don't know what he can become. That's why you need God. I hear what I'm saying. See, let me tell you something. This is why I personally believe that campus relationship is one of the best kinds of relationship. You know why? Because at that point, you see the brother when he wakes up, you see his drowsy eyes. There's nothing that is hidden. He can't lie for long. You've seen the shoe. You followed him to the shoemaker to help and patch it. So you know that this guy doesn't have much. You were the one who helped him to bargain the, the 500 naira material. You begged the tailor to sew it for him. So your love is genuine because it's not tied to anything. That's why many people, many people who already become blessed and wealthy hardly make good marital decisions. Which lady will not want a guy who, let me tell you something. Some people, have, some ladies have suffered who we'll talk about it. Once you enter 300 level, your mother calls you, Ella, come here. Say, come and sit here. Come now, Ella. Say, Ella, what did we eat day before yesterday? Beans. What did we eat yesterday? Beans. What did we eat today? I didn't have the opportunity to enjoy what you can enjoy. What I'm trying to say is this. A rich man is better than a poor man. Leave all those campus promising brothers. Look at Nigeria, no jobs. What is the guarantee? When do you want to marry? Say next year. Say find somebody that looks like next year. Don't find somebody that doesn't look like. It's not like I'm telling you not to choose or I wouldn't choose for you when they're already choosing for you. Hallelujah. Are you learning something this night? So, Ella now comes and begins to scout one promising, serious brother in decoration. You are serving, laboring in the house of God. But all you have is the promise of God. No manifestation yet. You just come to Ella and say, um, Ella, I, uh, <laughs> they don't even think about it. Though. I know where you are going. Let me help you get there. You are wasting your time, oh. Because of what the mother has already told her. So she's scouting around. Looking for this posh military officer in, in Jaji. Or army officer. Or director in bank. And every time she enters UBA, she's just smiling at the staff. Because you want to please your mother. And then, 10 years later, you have not married. And then you come and see that brother that you used to see his shoe when he's praying in koinonia because he doesn't want it to tear, he will remove it and keep it. But he's praying. He's fasting. Later you see the guy drop from his car and look and say, ah, I know you now. And you're like, yes, sir, I know you too. I know you. I know you. I know where I met you, sir. Say, sir, have you married? He said, ah, this is my little junior, come. You are, you are in for it this night, oh. Brothers, appreciate me if I'm helping you. Mm. Hallelujah. We're still talking about commitment. Many people run away from commitment. Many people. We hate commitments. In the house of God, commitment to your friends, commitment to your family, commitment to your work. Say, I receive grace to be committed. Hallelujah. Please celebrate them. Hallelujah. Emotional obsession is not enough. I hope you've learned that now. Because there are some of you who are wondering, this is my relationship, is in nose diving. But then you will find out 
that this tingly emotional feeling is not all there is to relationship. You will grow up and you will begin to take the burden of love, the burden of responsibility. Hallelujah. You take last, your father will whip you, yet you will go to the bank to withdraw school fees. He will talk and say, me, may God punish me if I pay your school fees. But before resumption, he brings the receipt. Where are you? Come. If you like, go back to school. Yet he said, may God punish me. I said, he even forgot the burden of love. Hallelujah. Very important. So how many of you are learning something? Now the third thing I want you to know about maintaining relationships. We spoke about emotional obsession that as good as it is, it's not enough. Number two, commitment. We spoke about commitment. Your commitment must be beyond your emotions to sustain any marriage. Must be far beyond a determination. Number three, communication. And this is where we will dwell seriously today. Everybody say communication. Hallelujah. How many of you have read the book Five Love Languages? Let me see your hands. How many of you have read any book on relationship and marriage? Aside from married people. You see what we are saying? Look at me. What you do not place value for, you will not excel. Are you listening to me? Whatever you do not, whatever you do not respect leaves you. Whatever you appreciate comes to you. So I'll take an extra from five love languages when it comes to communication. Hallelujah. Please look up. Hold on. Gary Chapman, in his years of research about marriage and relationship, why homes work and why homes do not work, came up with what he called five love languages. Look up, please. Now, a love language talks of a, a means of communication. Are you listening to me? The way and manner to which people want love expressed to them so that they can feel its effect. Are you listening to me? I can love you. Eh? Are you following me? I can love you, but until you are convinced. That means I must find ways of relating that love in a way that it relates to your realm. Is that correct? Are you following me? And this is what Gary Chapman called love languages. In his research, he found out that many relationships were broken and many homes were broken because the couple or the spouses did not know how to communicate love to one another. Are you following me now? And so he found out in his years and decades of counseling that honestly, many couples that were fighting in homes actually loved themselves. But what they lacked was the art of communicating the love. Are you following me now? To one another in a way that they will interpret it as love. Now, um, come, my dear. Now, if I look at this lady, are you listening to, and I look at her, and I say, ah, see your multicolored hair. Do you know, I may say it as a means of expressing that I like it, correct? But she can receive it as an insult. Have I communicated love to her? But do I love her? Are you, are you getting me now? So, I come and say, see your multicolored hair. This is supposed, in my own thinking, this is a beautiful compliment. When I expected a hug, where's your hand? What? Did a slap. If you don't like the hair, tell me to change it. Don't insult me like that. Bless you. Five love languages. Number one, he found out that now all of these love languages. 
are applicable to everybody but there is what we call the primary love language the primary love language is the best and most effective means that an individual interprets receives the feeling of love are you following me now number one words of affirmation whether you've read the book write it gary chapman found out that there were many men that what they wanted was words or men and women words of affirmation i will explain them very quickly number two acts of service acts of service from the acts of the apostles acts of service media if you can help us words of affirmation that's number one love language number two acts of service number three receiving gifts receiving gifts am i too fast number four quality time quality time and number five physical touch start it start that one start it and follow me number one words of affirmation number two acts of service number three receiving gifts number four what quality time five physical touch look up please gary chapman in his in his in his research found out that almost every human being had one of these as his primary or her primary love language what is word uh, word of affirmation this is mostly strong for men look up please for many men words of affirmation is their primary love language two people again oh yeah now you and somebody sweetheart come don't be afraid don't worry bless you stand here you stand here words of affirmation listen men are visionary men are purpose driven are you listening to me so words of i'm sorry words of affirmation is that assuming this is a husband and a wife and she's telling him she's saying look sweetheart i know that our finances is not in the best position right now but do you know that the man that i met is more visionary than the man that i'm seeing now this guy is broke you are suffering there's no food at home but now he's depressed words of affirmation you are telling him look like you always used to tell us we are coming out of this do you still believe it i believe in you remember when you said god told you that this ministry will blossom the guy does not what are you doing you are speaking his primary language of love you are affirming are you following me now it's an affirmation you are letting him know that i believe in you and i'm not letting circumstances dictate it food may not be in the house but i'm ready to stand by you words of affirmation and suddenly this guy looks and he says look even if we come back in another planet you is you that i'll marry you that's why you see some guys go through hell and high water as soon as they come out they marry the girl that was there for them straight even if she was a villager because as far as they are concerned that was the person who was able to speak their love language hallelujah rain wash jordan bookstore for instance and everybody is just sending texts oh god jordan god help you and then one sister comes and says jordan how can i help look something like this happened to my brother and so i can understand ah! jordan won't sleep jordan won't sleep jordan will just smile i didn't know you will answer me this way i didn't know you will answer me this way she just spoke his love language everybody say words of affirmation very few ladies have words of affirmation as their primary love language, but they do. Number two, acts of service. 
There are many people that are obsessed about receiving a helping hand. Especially ladies. Hallelujah. So this lady is, is, is walking in the kitchen. Eh? Put your hands here. You are walking in the kitchen. You are washing plates now. You put the other hand. Do you wash plates with one hand? That's right. Now, she's, she's washing plates. And then this guy, how many of you know this kind of big CD in our house? That you just touch something and then your father is just listening to his reggae. Remembering his days. And the mother is just sweating and angry in the kitchen. First she starts singing hymns. The song is playing loud. But she's singing. What a friend we have in Jesus. She's angry. Your father doesn't know. Because her primary love language may be acts of service. Martha in the Bible had her primary love language as the act of service. That's why she was angry when Mary left her just walking and she, at a point she couldn't hide it. She came to Jesus and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, Jesus wasn't the thing. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. There are people who are obsessed about receiving a helping hand. I've seen people like that, guys and ladies. So now you come and meet her and you say, um, can I help you? Can I help you wash the plates? She says no. Honestly, she will tell you no. But her satisfaction is that you were able to speak her love language. That you came to show her a helping hand. Are you following me now? Very important. A lady can be holding a book. You say, let me help you. She will still give you the book. You'll be wondering now, wow, what kind of arrogant lady? She may not be arrogant. It's her primary love language. Are you following me now? That's why there can be a beehive of guys around her. But it's the person who can speak her love language. The race is not to the swift, though. The battle is not to the strong. Somebody is buying Mr. Biggs. Buying Mr. Biggs. She will carry the Mr. Biggs and be sharing it with the brother that is doing acts of service for her. You say, somebody was generous to me. One brother brought Mr. Biggs. Can we eat together? We've been working together. She got a room off K. The guy came to help her. Humble, they were sweeping together. Ah, ah. Later, she will stop and be looking. Ah, she's seen her husband. The other guy is just sending Mr. Biggs. She will call that guy and say, Kai, I was sweeping my room today. The guy said, Really? That means you're hungry. Say, eh, Well, if not immediately it comes. They will share it with her real husband. That's why some of you guys have been. Suffering because you don't know the road to the city. Number three, receiving gifts. Now look up, please. This is very important. There are many people who are obsessed about receiving gifts, especially ladies. It's not materialism, it's their love language. Hallelujah. How many of you have seen ladies every time you are traveling say, what will you get for me? I tell you that's a big sign that receiving gifts is their love, is their primary love language. And truly you will think they are playing. You will carry your big mouth and say, I will buy chicken. I will. You think they will forget. When you come, they are looking at many things. They are just looking at what looks like chicken around your hand. You didn't bring it to find out that they are suddenly edgy. They are angry. They are not cooperating. What happened? Hallelujah. They love it. They love gifts. It's not about the cost. Even if it's one sweet, you just say, guess what? What's your name? Regina, beautiful name. Regina, I just bought one eckless, eckless, or Tom Tom, Tom Tom said she doesn't have Qatar. But she said, really? Ha, Kai, that was so touching. Five Naira. Five Naira. But that's her love language. That's the guy's love language. There are guys like that. There are men of God like that. Their love language is you must come with something. If not, the anointing will not be stirred up. They must receive something. Number four, let's run. Quality time. Aha. Quality time. Hold on now. Husband and wife. Now, quality time is so important. Hallelujah. 
businessmen, pilots, soldiers, oil company workers, pastors, listen, accountants, students, time. And this is not just ladies. There are guys that want time like ladies. So, there are people, this is their primary love language. Now, this guy is offshore two weeks. Two weeks is drilling oil for Nigeria. You are drilling oil. You are drilling oil. This lady is there. Once they spend one day, they don't see you. That time, their body starts, they are obsessed about time. There are ladies like that. The guy says, um, I'll come and see you in two hours. Even if it's accident that happened, and he got, even if it's accident, he's bringing the trouser that tore. Say, see, I brought this to explain. You see, I, I changed trouser. She said, I'm, I'm not hearing anything, you know. You're on your own. Because the way you have been behaving, this relationship, see the guy up and down. The guy has to prepare a special atmosphere that will repay what would have happened. And now says, I just wanted you to know that I'm at the dam now. I'm waiting for you. Say, eh, which part of the dam? Aha. Uh -huh. Attention. Time. With who? No, I'm alone. I'm alone. Alone and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Say, me, I want to sleep now. And the guy say, have I did all this for you? Oh, yeah, I'm coming. She will drop it and start smiling. Start doing all her foundation. Put everything. Do everything. You're on your way running. And then when you get there, you are happy because he's speaking your love language. Physical touch. I said you should start it. Oh. The reason is because, please look up. And I must say this, we are Christians. The emotional nature, please listen. I say this all the time. I know there are some of you who just run and say, please, Gary, all these people you are trying to Many of these books you read. You see, in America, a guy can go out with this lady and be having a French kiss with her. Christians, they love God in the presence of her parents. And they'll be happy. Oh, dear. They'll be remembering their own. But the problem is, because of the, please listen, this is important, the context of our culture, are you listening to me? And the effect because we are emotional beings. By the time there are many ladies that are obsessed and guys too, their primary love language is touch. Now when I talk of touch, I'm not talking of immorality. They are not bad. Honestly, they are not corrupt. Are you following me now? They like hugging. This is a hugging generation. There are times that we are counseling ladies and as soon as they come, you see Bishop do it sometimes here. Or Jake's. When they come, they are trying to fight their tears. And what happens? The love language of a touch. If your mind is not, if your mind has a problem with it, please, just come for counseling. Because the Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. There are some of you that anything in your mind, say, how can a guy stand yet? Please, I beg, please. Let's, let's learn first. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Very important. Now, of course, I'm not saying in a relationship you have to say, see you, minimum distance. This is how we are. No. But, but, listen. You must be careful. Look up, please. Are you learning? Are we Christians here? Yeah? Are we Christians? Please. Everything we are saying is within the jurisdiction of the kingdom. I don't know what you have learned from Nigerian films, but we are Christians. This is a lady you are physically attracted to. Is that true? Please answer me. Is that true? Now, ah, see, we are human beings, so you are a man, no, you are a woman, no. Be careful. Hallelujah. By the time you start doing some funny things, like saying, okay, you want to laugh this lady, even if a Bible is in front of two of you, and you are doing Bible study, there's trouble. It may not happen that day, but be sure you're on the way to destruction. 
I know what I'm saying will offend some of you. It doesn't make sense. But let me tell you, help yourself. Praise God. What did I say? Help yourself. So try to minimize, minimize, minimize the love language of touch. When you are married, back your wife and go out with her. That's your, back her. Go out with her. That's your cup of tea. Let everybody know that two of you, your love language is touch. At least you are married. But that you are single. And then some things, you and the person may know you are pure. But you see, the report before men, especially if you are a leader. Are you, are you following me? Very important. There are some things you do. They may not be wrong in themselves. But the effect, the message it can pass to other people is what is very dangerous. And you must have that staying power to help yourself. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? So if your love language is a touch, please receive grace from God. And understand that it will be minimized until marriage. Hallelujah. When you get married, against such, there's no law. Sleep with yourself from morning till night. Back, back, you, that's your cup of tea. Do whatever you want to do. But for now, that you are not married, help yourself so that you will marry willingly, happily, and honorably. Hallelujah. So that they won't force you and say, okay, you have demonstrated to us your willingness to marry in two weeks. Therefore, prepare and do everything. Please, avoid such kind of things. Because it will make you to hate the person that you are supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Is somebody hearing this? So if you have been in a relationship or if you are married, that's okay. You are exempted from all this. But if you are in a relationship, there are some of you that do funny things. You just stand. I, I saw one guy around social center and he was, I can't even begin to describe what I saw. Around that place where they park. And I know that lady, I'm sure she's a Christian lady. Kai, it was too extreme. Eh? Whether your love language, whatever your love is, too extreme. Please, Christians. Are we together? You're angry, Abby? I will say it. I'm not going to stop it. It's too much. You are doing as if they will steal the woman. Be careful. If you can't, whatever is pursuing you, go and meet her parents. It's too much. Some things believers do around. I know some of you will not be. It's too bad. Guys come to ladies' hostel or come. At, it's, it's, too, it's too intimate. It's too expressive. See, you may not go to hell, but you are certainly not going to live a fruitful life because that thing is leading you into trouble. I'm telling you this. Take what I'm saying very seriously. Do you know when your touch for a lady becomes excessive, she starts fading and getting cheap before you? Are you listening to me? There is no, no expectancy again. Ladies, there are some of you. Anybody can touch you anywhere, anyhow, anytime. You don't mind. You are just smiling sheepishly. Guys will keep changing you and you are just around social center. You are around anywhere. You just run, 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 climb the guy's back and you are laughing. He will drop you. The other one will carry you. What kind of wife do you want to become? Open your eyes. Open your ears. Then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Would you open your ears? And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. You do that. You just enter a relationship. Before you know it, you are. Ah, come on, no. And brothers, there are some of you that are shameless. May God grant you grace to be disciplined in Jesus' name. Say amen. Some of you behave as if you are not Christians. You are not the first to enter a relationship. You will not be the last. 
People have held themselves for years. Or oh God, what is pursuing you? Behave yourself. You are just around the lady as if you are as if it's a fly. And anybody, I don't know what you want. Abba. And there are ladies, look at me, sisters. I'm talking to you now because there are many guys here that got into certain things because of the pressure that the ladies mount. Many ladies, your love language is physical touch. Be careful. What did I say? What did I say? Oh? Manage yourself. I know that biologically speaking, there are many biological and psychological reasons as to why ladies will want touch as their primary love language. But let me tell you, this is why the spirit of God comes. Are you hearing me? You are not an unbeliever. You are a Christian. It is because of physical touch that many people have gotten into pornography. Hear me, please. Masturbation, homosexualism. Are you following me now? Lesbianism. I will say it all. Internet pornography. And you have done many unthinkable things because of the vulnerability of the human body to the touch. This is why you must be careful. I'm warning you now. Be careful. I'm speaking to you. See my heart and see the love. I'm a human being too. But I'm telling you, be careful. So that you will get married happily and honorably. Praise the Lord. Is that possible? Is that possible for a Christian? Yes. How do you make that possible? Discuss it. See, when you enter a relationship... The boundaries you don't discuss, you will cross. Discuss it. Tell him, oh, me, honestly, the way I am. See, I once counseled a lady years ago. Listen to this. I found out that this lady was so obsessed about physical touch. And I knew she was a Christian and she loved God. And it was, it was getting, too, ah, it was too much. She can want to hug you and fly on you. You know how Superman does as in fly on mercilessly, as in this kind, loosely and carelessly, you know that this one has crossed the boundary by far. And I found out that, ah, what is, there must be something wrong. And then I got to find out that she had a medical condition of hormonal imbalance. Are you following me now? This was what was response. She didn't, it, she had an unusual craving for touch. And we had to put this lady under careful surveillance so that we gather against wolves in sheep <laughs> clothing. Because there are some, let me tell you, the church has all kinds of brothers. So sometimes, that's why you see us guard our sister sometimes. When we see you coming around and you have been too careless, we'll tell you, behave. Please, we are watching, behave. Behave. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you, sir. Everybody said five love languages. How do you know your partner's love language? By their consistent complaints. Right. Their consistent complaint is a sign that you are not responding to their love language. You serve every time you travel. You don't used to think about me. Every time you travel, that's how you leave me alone. Even a flash, aha, quality time. She's speaking her love language to you. If you are smart, get it, note it, and start responding. Hallelujah. Praise God. Very important. Look at me. When you see a lady start talking about, can we go to church together? Can we sit together? Can we, they say, high five your neighbor. She's looking at you and hoping you look at her back. You high five somebody else, you will explain it sooner or later. She won't forget it. That's, that's touch there. Are you following me? Or a lady that informs you the day you give her this thing, she informs you about the date of her next birthday. Right away, so that you start preparing. Ah, that's, that's receiving gifts there. Brothers, 
have you been sensitive? Ladies, have you been sensitive? You see this guy walking all the time. He tells you, I have a building project. I've been trying to build. You just land and look at him and say, you didn't even see my reform. What of words of affirmation? Why don't you speak his love language? That's why you can see a guy will look at the girl and say, you're a selfish lady. Or a guy will look at a visionary brother and say, you are very selfish. The guy's hand is like this. Aha, receiving gifts. This is not quality time. If you see ladies and this guy, his hand is like this. Like his big head, his hand is like that. Receiving gifts. Hallelujah. Let me give you an assignment. Do it in one minute right now. Everybody, write your love language. Find it, you know it. Some of you are laughing. Some of you say all. It's a lie. It's a lie. No matter what health issue you have, you have only one love language. Don't say, yeah, me too. The doctor said, no, you have one. Please find it. So that you know it. If you are in a relationship, this is the week of discussion. If you are married, discuss this with your spouse. Say, I didn't know that this trouble I've been making in this house is as a result of absence of meeting my love language. I'll give you the love language again. Number one, words of affirmation. Number two, acts of service. Number three, receiving gifts. Number four, quality time. Number five, physical touch. Be honest between you and God. Write it. Don't show anybody. It's none of your neighbor's business. Just write it. Write it and know it. Know it now. So that you stop punishing the brother. There are many of you that are always complaining. The guy has done everything he knows to do. You are saying he doesn't love you. He doesn't know what to do again. Please tell him what your love language is. It will help him to relate with you. Is someone learning something here? Maintaining relationships. Many homes are broken down because they do not know this. Look at me. I once counseled a, well, a young pastor, not, not really a young pastor. And, of course, I'm not mentioning names of ministries and all of that, but I don't know what it was. This guy just got married, and it was very funny because it looked like all about their lives was ministry. This guy can travel and not see the lady for months. And I knew where he learned that from. The lady was angry. Hallelujah. But she didn't know how. Some ladies will not talk. But it's eating them. Are you listening to me? And that situation, when I, the guy was troubled. And then I said, okay, let me, can I talk with the lady? I talked to her on phone. This lady started crying and say she doesn't even trust the guy again. She doesn't even know if the guy is sleeping around. I just knew that her love language is quality time. And this guy has not spent time with her. Brothers, let me shock you. If you don't spend time with a particular lady, one day you will come and find your files and everything outside and she has already married another man. They've given birth to children you don't know. Businessmen, beware. Bishop gave us a story of, of one man somewhere this guy was a billionaire. He was obsessed about making money. And he would not spend time with his wife. We'll talk about maintaining marriages now. That's where we'll talk of sex, marriage, emotion, spending time, God, and all of this. When, when, when you are not married, we don't have anything to say about sex. If you have been waiting for me to talk about sex, you are wasting your time. Till we start talking about marriage. Marriage with a ring. Marriage with a ring. Praise God. Say amen if you are getting blessed. If this thing is offending you, it's a sign that you may need to adjust some things. Don't get angry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because honestly, many of us are too loose. We have allowed a lot of things. There are many Christian relationships that they sleep with one another. They are happy. They don't think it's an issue. The brother showed the sister a nice scripture in the Bible. First Corinthians. Twisted the girl's head. I'm telling you now, get it straight. Sex is only, only, only for married people. 
I don't care what the Western world says. When we talk about marriage here, I'm going to tell you the spiritual implication of sex. We'll talk about it. You know us here, we don't have time for any story, story. We don't teach, we are not teaching you biology. We are teaching you something that will help you in life. And so we'll say it as it is. Many of you think sex is just all about pleasure and emotional satisfaction. When I show you the spiritual side of sex, you will run away from any man who wants to sleep with you who is not your husband. Are you listening to me? God threatened me with that revelation. Threatened. When I had the revelation, I just said, ah, myself, behave. Joshua Selman, behave. In Jesus' name. Okay? Are you learning something right now? Could this be the reason why many of you have entered over 10 relationships and they didn't work. You are blaming any, everybody. Could it be that you are the problem now? Are you now seeing? Ten people cannot be wrong. Could it be that the problem is me? Before I round up, we are going to talk about what I call the love and respect principle. Still talking about communication. The love and respect principle. Now, Dr. Emerson, please write it and look up. We finish with Gary Chapman. Dr. Emerson wrote something about love and respect. And he called it the crazy circle. Everybody say the crazy circle. Say one more time, the crazy circle. For the last time, please. Let me have two people again. At least Ella come again. And who? When Ella came out, who came out? Oh, yeah, now. Oh, God, you are doing as if. Come and stand, please. Ella and him. You are married. Or you are going out. Hold your hand. Praise God. What is the crazy circle? This was the example he gave. Listen. Please listen. They are celebrating their 10 year anniversary. Correct? And this guy is busy. So he looks at, you know this kind of card that you, don't, you really don't see what they just write. Maybe something sweet. And you know we men, we, are, we can, sometimes we, we are not thorough. You just see the card. Ah, I like it. So he bought the card. He has been forgetting all the wedding anniversaries. And she's hoping he will remember the tenth one. Are you getting my example? So now the guy comes and gives her a surprise. Hold it. Honey, I bought you this card. Now Ella is smiling, smile now. Don't, don't worry. Now she's smiling. Finally, she's interpreting this care and attention as what? Love. Is that correct? Then she opens the card only to find out that the guy bought a birthday card mistakenly. Please listen to my story. What did he buy? During an anniversary. Suddenly she looks at it. Bam! She drops it down. And says, it was better. You didn't buy the card. What is she doing? Listen. She has been compromised. He, he has failed to interpret love. So she feels the only way to know him make it to... to Make him know it is by being negative and hurting him. Are you following me now? Now the guy is angry because he interprets what she has done as disrespect. Are you following me now? And he's saying, can you not even appreciate the fact, how many men can remember to buy an anniversary card? I bought you an anniversary card. If you talk to me like this again, I will slap you. Why? Now, he too is revenging. Dr. Emerson calls it the crazy cycle. Where a woman responds negatively to communicate her heart. And the man responds negatively to. Fire for fire ends two of you in ashes. Correct? This is the crazy cycle. Do you understand? I told you that ladies desire love, care, attention. Men desire what? Respect. Everybody say respect and honor. So, what the love and respect principle is the principle of communication in relationship and marriage that teaches you how to look beyond the acts of your spouse and see their heart. Are you following me now? Then you will be able to understand the craving that led to that activity that was done. Whether it was done well or not. Are you following me now? 
So let's, let's do it again. Now he gives her this. And then she collects it and opens it and it's a birthday gift. And she's like, wow, honey, I, I want to appreciate you. And she laughs and jokingly says, Ogasa, do you know you bought me a birthday gift? He said, oh, but at least you tried. If you remember this, ne this year, next year you'll be meticulous. Now what happens? She's sad. But she found out that dishonoring him will complicate the issue. Are you following me now? So in that honor, the guy now feels bad because she has honored him. And he will now say, do you know what? We are going out this night. Even the devil will not stop us. I must make this up because she has honored him. Are you following me? We call it the love and respect principle. There are some ladies whose marriages and relationship will never work until they learn this. Look up. Ladies, look up. No matter what enters you, don't ever get so wild and angry that you start insulting a guy and washing him down and giving it to him. Ladies, call it giving it to him. You give it to him. Say, I washed him from head and washed, I gave it to him. He knew that I've been watching him. You are laughing. Let me tell you something. No matter how beautiful you are, your beauty will fade like a leaf. The guy will hate you forever. Are you, are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Don't try to embarrass a guy. You went to Suya joint. Ogagambo is here. You are going to buy Suya. And of course, the guy wants to behave. So he'll say, um, you know, Ella, just speak for us. A wise lady will honor him back. You don't want to disgrace him. You know, based on your relationship, you can be free to say some things. Even if he's joking, how much oil should I keep? Oh, not just start laughing and say, hey, hey. Ogaga, how much? 50 naira, how much? 100 naira, how much? 200. He said, put five of this one. And all the guy has is 500. Now, this guy is sweating. He doesn't know what to do. He's looking around if you see any of his friends. He said, do you mind, mommy? I, I eat three. Three will be okay for me. How about you? He said, Ogaga, but just put two more. The guy is fidgeting. So his response is, he's just saying, put more. He already knows that this thing is a mess. There's no honor there. Hallelujah. And at the end, the guy suddenly looks at you and says, look, sweetheart, let me just tell you, I came with only 500. Why didn't you tell me? What kind of thing is this? When you are not ready, don't say, did I ask you for it? Did I ask you for it? Please, in fact, I'm even going. The friend will say, no, no, come. And that's how you, you go to the hostel. Let me tell you something. You broke the love and respect principle. You embarrassed the guy there, washed him there, you were happy. You entered your room boiling and your roommates had to tell you, calm down. Can you imagine? And you are saying he embarrassed you. You didn't look at his sincere effort. Are you following me now? Listen, God is speaking to some of you here. You need to change it. You have been breaking the love, respect cycle. And there are some of you brothers. You must be careful. Hallelujah. I've said it here. Don't put too much culture inside your relationship. Hallelujah. The lady just comes and says, Hi, how are you, Elijah? And you're like, Ah, Ella. See, look at me. I'm from a royal family, one. Number two, I'm older than you. Something that is supposed to be obvious. Even my sisters kneel down to greet me. See, don't, don't think just because I asked you out to you within all these things. Let me tell you, I can leave this relationship and I will sleep fine. This nonsense the brother is saying now is called breaking the, the, the love respect cycle. Are you hearing me? Don't do that. So, when there is love from this side, there is what? The Bible says, Proverbs 24, we're rounding up. Proverbs 24 verse 3. Let's look at it quickly. Proverbs 24 verse 3. From Amplified. Is it possible to get me Amplified? Amplified. Please project it. I want you to read it. We are going to pray. The devil is a liar in Jesus name. That devil that wants to destroy relationships and marriage. We will cast it out this night in the name of Jesus. 
Everybody say, my marriage must work. Say it, it must work in Jesus' name. All right, everybody, let's read. One, two, read. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established upon a sound and good foundation. He said, through skillful and godly wisdom is what? So if you understand the principles, God is speaking. There are some of you that God stopped from entering relationships so that you can understand this. Hallelujah. The greatest craving for a lady is the craving to be loved. Brothers, say it after me. The greatest craving for a lady is to be loved, to be cared for, to be protected. Ladies, say after me, the greatest desire for a man is to be respected, to be honored. Now, just stop me one minute. In what way have you been dishonoring the men around you, ladies? This is a time for soul searching, for rounding up. In what way? In what way? I stopped the keyboard playing so that you will listen carefully. There are many of us that you need to change your attitude. Are you following me now? You need to what? Change your attitude. I want all the ladies in Koinonia to treat the brothers with respect and dignity. It doesn't matter if the guy is older than you or you are older than the person. Treat them well. Are you listening to me? What did I say? Treat them well. Don't treat the blooders like rags. If you've been doing it, stop it. Because do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he will reap. One day they will treat you like rags. Treat the brothers with respect. When you see them, greet them. Be smart. Don't think it is weakness. Many of you have been taught you think it's being cheap. You are being virtuous. Are you following me? You are not being cheap for God's sake. You are being virtuous. Brothers, let me never see you shouting, insulting, embarrassing, boiling at any lady. You are struggling for seat with her. He said, all I know is that me, except you will cut these two legs. You can do all your thing. Eh? I must sit down here. And the lady is looking very helpless. You are bullying her. Hallelujah. Brothers, we should protect our sisters for us. I've said it here. Brothers, behold your wives. Sisters, behold your husband. It's not a lie. Huh? It's not a lie. It will happen. It's happening. It will keep happening. So treat them well. The person you may be treating with this day now may be your husband. True, true. Treat them well. Hallelujah. Don't gauge people and say, Kai, the way this brother is dressed himself now, wow, you don't merit my respect. When you look at the brothers, you look at them and say, mm, this guy baths well, he's nice, he's not pouring saliva at me anyhow. I will respect him. But the brother that is coming, praise and worship, you are just shouting and pouring saliva. And he say, brother, now what about me? Kilo Shelley, what is wrong? <laughs> are you the only one in Koinonia? Are you the only one who can call upon the name of the Lord? <laughs> Ladies, lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm a virtuous woman. In the name of Jesus, I honor my husband. I respect my husband. In the name of Jesus. And say one more time, in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. And I respect them. Please put down your hands. God bless you. Guys, lift your hands. Lift two of your hands. Please do it. Lift two of Aside, no, if you are not my... Sir, no, ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. 
I'm a caring brother. Say it. I'm a caring brother. I'm a loving brother. What, what else? I'm a what? I'm a, I'm a responsible brother. I'm a visionary brother. Say it again. I care for my wife. I protect her. I take her seriously. I pay the price to be committed. In Jesus' name, put down your hands. Yeah. That's very, very good. If you do that, you will find out that you can enter a relationship. And I won't promise you a smooth sail. But you see, at every juncture, things can be managed. Is someone learning something tonight? We are going to pray. We have three prayer points tonight. Before we stand up, listen. The first prayer point is you are going to pray for humility. There are some of you that this teaching tonight stung you in a way that you are still angry with me now because it changed your ideologies. There are ladies that believe you are too hot, too attractive to respect any man. Let me tell you now, straight to the point, somebody is better than you. Period. There are some guys that think you are too much of a celebrity. You are a hot cake. Everybody talks about you. You are the guy. Let me announce to you now. Stop dreaming. Stop what? Dreaming. Because there are 3,000 other prophets who have not bowed to bear. And God can replace any arrogant man and any arrogant lady. Praise the Lord. Some of you, the way you are behaving, you are telling God you don't want to marry because you are not ready to listen to the rules and comply. We are going to pray. Next week, I'm going to, we are going to be discussing. Don't miss next week's meeting. It's going to be a serious, it's going to be war against delay and all of these satanic things. I'm going to be teaching you a lot of spiritual mysteries. You'll be seeing the reason behind delay and all of these things. Because there are some of you who are standing in for your family members and your loved ones. Some of you have done all these things that we are saying, but things are not working. We'll be examining it tomorrow. Are you ready to pray? Stand up on your feet. Bless you. Now, look up. How many people did I bring out here? Where are they? Four of you. Huh? We are going to give you lunch tomorrow. I didn't say you are in a relationship. It's, it's our appreciation. Four of you. Huh? Four of you, you will go for lunch tomorrow. Hallelujah. Next time when we are giving example, run and come on. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Listen. You are going to pray and say, Lord, whatever needs to be changed in me, please humble yourself. Whether you are married, whether you are single, whether you are in a relationship or not, humble yourself and cry to God. And say, Lord, there are some things in me. There are some mindsets and ideologies that I've been having. But from this night's teaching, I've seen that I need to change. Lift your voice and cry. Cry to God. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I repent from pride and arrogance. I repent from having a wrong attitude. A wrong attitude about relationship. A wrong attitude about marriage. Make sure you are praying. But Lord, I hear your voice tonight. Thank you for preparing me. Pray, say, Lord, change me. Walk on me. Make me a woman of virtue. As I am right now, I'm not yet fit to be a woman of virtue. I humble myself. Change me. Don't be arrogant tonight. 
Don't be arrogant tonight. Humble yourself and pray. Say, Lord, I've tried, but you need to work on me. Hallelujah. 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 Now, please pair yourselves into two. You are going to pray for the brother or the sister you are holding. If you can, if you cannot, no problem. Hallelujah. Listen, second prayer point. You are going to pray. Hallelujah. And you are going to say every mindset that is in that brother or that, there are some of us, there are strongholds. Some of us are stubborn. Even after this teaching, you will live angry and you will live offended rather than allowing the teaching to get inside you. Hallelujah. You are going to pray for your neighbor and say, Lord, please break this person. We want excellent wives. We want visionary men. Pray for the person. Lord, walk on my sister. Walk on my brother. In the name of the Lord Jesus, break every pride. Break every wrong mindset. Let our sisters become women of virtue. Women of virtue. Women of virtue. Excellent women. Award-winning women. Pray for the brothers. Let our men become responsible. Men of integrity. Men of stature. Men of grace. Pray for her. Say, Lord, let the spirit of respect, let the spirit of honor come upon my sister. Grace to respect men. Grace to respect your husband. Grace to respect your husband. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, you can leave the person. The final prayer point this night. Listen, listen. We are going to pray for purity in our relationships. Did you hear that? If you've been involved in anything that you know you have crossed boundaries, don't feel bad. We don't condemn you. This is a family. Are you hearing me? This is a family. There is always a new beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you're going to make a decision. Make a decision with God. And say, I'm going to keep my relationship pure. If you are married, say, I'm going to keep my marriage pure. No unfaithfulness. No infidelity. Lift your voice and pray. Grace for purity. Please take it serious. Pray. You've been involved in any kind of ungodly lifestyle or practice. Please pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Grace. Ladies, pray and say, no man who is not your husband will see your nakedness. Make a commitment with God. Make a commitment. It is worth it. It is worth it. It may look unusual, but I tell you it is worth it. It will bring the anointing of God to your life. It will bring the glory of God to your life. It will bring the fire of God to your life. Purity. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Lord, let us have pure relationships. Holy relationships. Pure relationships. Relationships that we will be proud of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We taught on emotional. Don't just let your emotions. Listen. There are many relationships right now. And many marriages and homes that are at the verge of breaking. They think it's Satan because that tingly thing is not there. I bring you a word right now. You know 
that every home is built by commitment. Are you listening to me? Emotions are good, but it's not enough to keep and sustain a home. If you commit yourself when you feel emotionally high and then retract it when it's down, you are not going to have a stable marriage. Your spouse will annoy you. There are times you will be offended, but you must make up your mind that you are committed. It's better to leave the relationship. For marriage, we don't believe in divorce. We're going to talk about that next week. Divorce, different things. Let me tell you something. Listen. Look at me. I'm saying it honestly. Listen. If you are in this place and you are in a relationship, if you know you are not going to be committed, please let the brother or let the sister go in peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did you hear what I said? Sisters, there is no putting leg one leg here and you are raising the brother's hopes making him feel that he's all in all for you meanwhile the real person you are looking at is in rivers you are just saying whoever among them starts talking about marriage this is ungodly let me tell you i've said it for years we don't believe in double dating double dating is not christian if you feel you have a problem with your relationship there are ministers around. Hallelujah. We have elderly people around that can counsel. By the time we talk with you and we see that, oh, there is a compromise. Truly, we see that based on the compromise, this relationship may not work. Listen, as Christians, if there is need to end relationships, we end relationships, not break them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You break relationships and break people's hearts. Next week, we are going to discuss there are people who have started relationships and eventually they saw that, okay, there is a need. This thing may not work well. We're going to talk about, there are a number of things we're going to talk about next week. Remember I said we'll talk on health issues, family issues, you know, faith issues, and all of these family encumbrances and so on. We'll talk about them. Hallelujah. No matter what it is, just like you enter the relationship and you came and met Bishop Stan or Pastor Jake, you say, oh, I'm in a relationship. Bless this relationship and pray. Some of you are in a relationship like secret society. Nobody knows. We don't know. No, you think, let me tell you, we are not sadists. Are you listening to me? We are not sadists, wicked people who are just waiting and say, Who told you to go out with that lady? No. We rejoice when you are in a relationship. When you are involved, you are in a relationship. When the relationship starts undergoing turbulence, nobody knows. You don't involve the ministers. You don't involve people so that will link you with parents and people who can help you counsel. Now you are facing a situation, maybe a health challenge, maybe interfaith thing, you know, all these kinds of, we'll talk about them next week. Maybe there are issues that will honestly not make the relationship work. At that point, what do you do? There are ways to go about it. Are you following me now? So that it is properly managed. In, to an extent that even when both of you are not together, you can be friends. There are people who, because they did not marry one another, all of them have married for 10 years, but they cannot look eyeball to eyeball because of what happened. This is what we want to avoid. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with liking the sister. You have heads of department. There are ministers in charge. Let me tell you, we are always here to help you. I tell you sincerely. Don't just do things. It's when everything backfires. You come and say, Bishop, this koinonia sisters, I don't understand though. Everybody I'm asking is saying, no, there is a reason. They are not stupid. There is a reason why they are telling you no. Pray and tell yourself, Lord, this is my issue. Locate your voice and pray. Pray from your heart. Outside, make sure you're praying. God wants to visit people tonight. My father, wipe the tears of people. Wipe the tears of families. Let ancient gates and doors be lifted. Once again, let there be an enthroning.
la makata bala la na 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 bala la la bala. Zede baka de bala de baka sabra de bala la la bala. Sibara na bala la baka dia bala la. Listen to me. Listen. There are some of you that what will be happening to you. I told you God is visiting families. Hallelujah. God will set altars of darkness on fire. There will be a separation. The Bible says blotting out. Every handwriting. Don't tell me there are no handwritings. You ask. The Bible says a hand came and wrote. There are still hands writing. And the Bible says blotting out. Hallelujah. God will be visiting people. See, let your heart be open tonight. I know that there are people who are coming just to find out. Is this thing real or fake? Don't cheat yourself tonight because the Lord of glory is in this place. There are all kinds of people in this place. Open your heart and believe that the Lord is king and he will locate you. Refuse to be a spectator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet, everybody. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us give. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us give. So let it rain. Tonight let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Father, let Time, let it rain. For who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Who has prophesied to you that your family must remain in this way? There is a blood that speaketh better things tonight than every ancestral blood of darkness. And I'm going to pray right now and take authority. I tell you the time has come. Enough is enough. Everybody shout enough is enough. Say one more time, enough is enough. Outside, I'm telling you what the Lord shows me tonight. There will be massive deliverances in this place. Hallelujah. When we start, we're just going to move fast so that we will conserve time. Hallelujah. Those outside, lift your hands. Just the people outside. Those outside, lift your hands. At the count of three, the angels of deliverance will sweep across and ordinances of darkness. I'd like you to bring all the people. At the count of three, I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. Are you ready? Those outside, just the people outside. One, two, three. The fire of the Holy Ghost, the altars of Baal, we set altars of darkness, like a mighty rushing wind, move, the power of God is moving outside in a mighty way, I set a place. 
I set a place every power of darkness, every spiritual wickedness, every foul spirit. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus. The power of God is moving outside. The angel of the Lord moving outside. God is shaking things outside. Shaking things. Shaking things. Shaking things. Every power of hell outside. Release God's people. The power of God is still moving outside. Those of you inside, lift up your hands. At the count of three, I like you to shout the name Jesus. Goodness, I see the angels of the Lord. And these are not the kinds of angels I see every miracle service. Hallelujah. There will be a shout, a healer, the instrumentalist. At the count of three, and the Spirit of God, on behalf of yourself and your family members. Are you ready at the count of three? One, two, three. Jesus! Every demon spirit, every curse, every ordinary, bring them out. The fire of the Holy Ghost blowing across this place. The fire of the Holy Ghost outside, outside, outside. There are still angels outside.
Something will lead you tonight. of bondages. The power of God is touching somebody outside. In a mighty way, somebody outside. A devil of darkness, you will let her go. Come out of her right now. Come out of her. Devil of darkness. Out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Is against you tonight. Hallelujah. Let this girl go now. Foul devil of darkness. Come out of her. Out. You're free in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up. Let this girl go now. Thou foul devil. In the name that is above all names. Out you go. Out now. Come out of her. Out of her. Please make sure everyone is connecting. This has nothing to do with falling down. God is visiting people. Look at me. You, look at me. Just look at me. No, you don't need to come out. Just look at me. Look at me. Just keep your eyes looking at me. Let this girl go now. Foul devil of darkness. I come against you and against the infirmity. Come out of her. your night of visitation. Hold my hand. Come out of her! Go 
God is going to visit this whole family. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing the thing of darkness. This is what God is showing me. I didn't even know I was pointing to family members. Hallelujah. Mommy, let me pray for you. Because this is, this is a demonic thing. Trying to affect your health. Please hold my hands. Mommy, please hold my hands. Please, if you can shout Jesus as loud as you can. Can you? Just as loud as you can. Go ahead. Please lay one hand on your chest. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. This is a curse of marital delay. Let her go. Now! Thank you, Jesus. Come out of her. Out of her. Come out. You're free. Same thing. Come out of her right now. Devil of darkness. You're leaving. I see you in the spirit. You're going. It's time for this family to step into a new level. Be free. Praise the Lord. Any lump, lump in your breast, lump anywhere is going to leave right now. Make sure you check yourself. Instant miracles of lumps. I, I saw it and the Lord told me it's time. I want to pray it right now. I told somebody to come out. I brought somebody from that place. Who is the person? I told her God will visit her. Not the woman. tears that you're crying tonight. Are you listening to me? Just look at me. Roll away. Shame and reproach. Roll away. Shame and reproach. Give her a new beginning, oh God. Visit her family. I want to rebuke lumps right now. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is, this is God is helping people. There are people you've had lumps, multiple lumps in your breast. It's going to disappear right now. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll have a few. Let me tell you something with this lady. You notice she's always coming out. I will see her afterwards. A literal human being appears to sleep with this girl. This is what is responsible. This is, this, is, this is not just an issue of deliverance. This is an issue of help. This is a family thing. This is what the Lord is showing me. This is not just the devil coming. I mean, this is not in a dream. Uh -uh. You see, that's why whenever they come, these spirits leave her, but they don't go away. Early in the morning, they will reappear again. That's it. So, let's just let her be. God will set her free. Hallelujah. Are you ready, lumps? In the name of Jesus. Please, as soon as I pray for you, make sure you start checking yourself. Many of you will be shocked. It will look like magic. Maybe we'll take some testimonies here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, every lump in your breast or any part of your body, your neck, your waist, wherever, right now, I command it to disappear. In the name of Jesus, I command it to leave. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Go ahead, begin to check yourselves. Come, bring that child.
Can we have the mic, please? What's, what, what is what's the issue? Help us with the mic, please. He has not been eating. Who brought him? Whose child is this? Where is his mother? If we are calling your child, Mama, please come. Let's save time. Huh? He came all the way from Kano. Yes, I asked them to come. Re rejoice because you will know you need God tonight. Amen. Please, somebody hold this child because you too. Come out of her. Out. Hold this child, please. You are the first to be visited all the way from Kano. That devil, this woman is supposed to die before the end of the year. I curse this spirit out right now. Out of her with a loud shout you are going. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong with the child? He has not been eating. So you take him to the... Why did he have all these abnormalities? The <laughs> doctors. Madam, look at me. You are delivered. I don't know what it is that's wrong with you, your legs. But I'm seeing light. Power of God. Hallelujah. What happened to your child? Talk to us, please. Let's save time. I gave back to him normal. He was normal when I gave back to him. Okay. So when it was four months, we discovered that there was one carrot on the other side. So we went to the hospital after the, the scanning. They said that there is water in the house. That water came. Water? Yes. That's hydrocephalus. So we need doctors. Who is the doctor here? Undergo operation. Not student doctor. Eh? Okay, come. Thank you. Sir. What? They say hydrocephalus. What's that? Hydrocephalus is accumulation of water in, in the furnaces of the brain. Okay, what does it what does it lead to this? Yes. It will keep on enlarging until the capacity of the bone is able to contain. So the bone itself sinuses, that is the sutures we keep on expanding. Does it have a medical cure? Um, the only medical cure is to drink the water. But even as at that, I don't think it has a medical cure. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest <laughs> that he might destroy the works of the evil. See, the Bible says from the beginning it was not so. This is nonsense. Are you listening to me? And our job is to bring everything back to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. This demonic you did not create. Look at me. Come back. Leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her. Don't talk to her. She will come back. You will come back with a testimony. This child's head will start reducing. Are you hearing me? This child, it supernaturally, you will see it go back. Are you listening to me? Hold on, I know. I'm seeing a girl, baby girl. My first daughter, I left her. Where is she? She's dead. She's dead. That's what I said. The spirit of death. You would have died before the end of the year because I'm seeing a baby girl. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't see her again. Where's your husband? He's in Canada. Get ready. A baby girl is coming again. <laughs> huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. I have three boys. I just gave birth. The boy, I was not happy. That's what I'm telling you. Do, did you discuss this with me? Did you discuss no, this with me? No, Please, no. if I don't call any case, don't start bringing people out. I'm Please. You for your first Please. Time, but let her come out. If we, if, if we don't call cases, please, we are taking this. I'm, I'm meeting you for the first time. That's what I'm saying. Knowing me is not important. It's the Lord Jesus Christ whom you know. He will come back here and give a testimony. Amen. Of a baby Amen. girl. Amen. All right, the flame of death. And tell your husband where is he working? He works with the school. He's and then what happened? He's still working. He's still working there. Yes. That's not where he's supposed to be. Huh? We take him to the.
the rightful place. Amen. Where God will bless him. Because this, this has been a financial challenge. This is issue of money. Yes. Is that true? Yes. But you people too are not very faithful in tithing. So you must start being faithful in tithing. Huh? Did you discuss it with me? No. You could tithe one today because of an emotional message. The only way God knows. You open the door for Satan. Hmm? Madam, you will go back with favor. Amen. I release upon you that grace for favor. You came with them. What's wrong with his ears? Uh, they took him to the hospital. He was. He it's was still as a result. It's as a result of all of these things. It's connected. Don't worry. As God is taking him back, there will be complete restoration. Hmm? Your son will not. You will come back here with testimonies. Amen. Who are you? You know them, or you are from Kano too? Elder sister. Your elder sister. Yes, Tell sir. me one thing you want the Lord to do for you. To heal. Think well, not him, you. Don't just talk carelessly. I'm not. Not many people will have the opportunity to be asked this question. Let me tell you. To help my family with open doors of favor. Where is your father? My father is late. Where's your mother? Behind them. No, no, no. I'm not saying she should come out. You are a student? Yes, I finished my secondary school tonight, so I've been writing things. This is what you would have asked. This is why I asked you. That's what I was praying for you. Eh? You have your relatives here, people who know you, who have also prayed for you. Hold my hands. Get into the university in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever the problem is, we cancel it here right now. I don't care what it is. We admit you into any university of your choice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your number one desire. God will locate your family. Bless you. Where is, please, who brought this woman? Please, if we don't call your case, we are going to, we are going to deal with this. If not, we will have this place very rowdy now. Who brought this woman? Oh, yeah, come now. Who brought her? No, no, don't worry, don't worry. What's wrong with her? brain. She lost her memory. She lost her memory. She's lost her memory. She doesn't know you now. Ah. What happened? Don't know. I'm just her house help. Oh, you are just her house help. Come and help me. Look at this girl. Many house helps. This is the time to plunder and run away, pastor. May God turn you from a house help to a great woman. This is your own blessing this night. Hallelujah. This is terrible. Thank you, Jesus. That devil of darkness, he will let this woman go. I bring you life. Life to these dead cells, dead brains. In the name of Jesus. Stand up. Stand up. You look at me. Just look at me. Just look at me. Just try to look at me. You come back to me and go find somewhere and keep this noisy girl. Sweetheart, I pray for you. May the Lord visit you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody brought somebody brought a very sick person. I'm seeing we'll pray for them, but the Lord is showing me. You brought somebody, this sick person. Who is that person? Inside or outside? Please, let's save time more. God really wants to visit people and we don't want to waste unnecessary time here. You will come back with testimonies for this woman. It's terrible. 
Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone. You literally feel as though they put pepper in your eyes. When you look at light like this, it burns you seriously. This thing started this year. Who is that person, please? Who is that person? Who is that person? Oh. Is she the okay? Come. Who brought her? Mama? Does she, can I speak English or does she want answer? Come now. Why are you afraid? Huh? What's, what's the issue? Diabetes. Diabetes. It's affecting her eyes. I will pray for her. Tell her I will pray for her and the Lord will heal her. Is she hearing? Is she here? Mama, I will pray for you right now. This is a spirit. Be healed of diabetes right now. I come against that foul spirit. Check herself. Find out that there's no diabetes again. You, you came for yourself. What's wrong with you? Um, it's not that I'm sick. Okay. I need married with. Um, you want to get married? Go straight to the point. Look, let me tell you something. If we ask you to come out here and we and you are just talking stories, you go back to your seat. Praise God. This is this is a family. Nobody is against marriage. Yeah, is that true? If you came here for marriage, when we are praying, receive it. Don't say my neighbor will look. You don't want to get married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Did you hear the testimonies of the marriage? Sir? The yes, marriage sir. testimonies. Yes, Do you sir. believe God is still at work in this place? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. Are you in a relationship? You need to be delivered first before marriage. Hmm? I release you from this curse. This is what has been holding her back. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. We'll come back with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for supernatural marriages. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Some of you will need to outside. Are you, can you hear me outside? You can stand for yourself or for your family members. I want to pray. Make sure the person you want to get married to is of the opposite sex. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Please believe the Lord. Because one of the things that has been happening in this place is supernatural, inexplainable, the hand of God. Lift your hands. Hmm. In the name that is above all names. Now, there are some of you, as I pray, you see, some of you, what is stopping you is the hand of darkness. For a few people, not everybody, because I'm seeing spirits, the moment I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, the hand of God will come upon some people. Hallelujah. 
it will come upon them in a mighty way that's what is stopping the marriage lift your hands not everybody you can receive but there are some people this is what they need hallelujah when i say in the name of jesus i just want you to shout i receive the moment you say that god will visit some people i see god touching two ladies outside on this 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 marriage thing we must deal with it this night how many of you believe it in the mighty name of jesus now that devil of darkness that is responsible for delay in marriages come out right now come out right now come out right now that devil of darkness that is responsible the power of god is falling that devil there are spirits that are responsible for delay come out 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 these are demon spirits out in the name of jesus the lord rebuke you the lord rebuke you marital delay the lord rebuke you i tell you god is setting people free marital delay as is happening marital delay marital delay is a yoke of bondage outside the fire of god is visiting a few people all those above 30 30 and above who have not gotten married ladies let god visit you now i release that fire shake the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Let there be testimonies of supernatural marriages. This robe. I see an angel standing. There is one lady. The power of God will come upon you strong. That devil of darkness. Enough is enough. Just this row. Because I see the angel of the Lord standing. Lord, let that person come out. The Holy Ghost will bring you out. You will come out. You will come out. You will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Leave her alone. She will come out. No. I want to curse barrenness. Are you listening to me? Now is the time to stand for your loved ones, for yourself. Some of you lived all kinds of reckless past lives. As you are standing now, you may not even have a womb. A new one will come upon you. When God forgives sins, He forgives consequences. I don't care what the biological complication is. I like you to receive. You will come back with testimonies. Hallelujah. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That curse of childlessness. In the name of Jesus. I set you free. I set you free. I set your loved ones free. I set you free. Any barren person in this place, any barren family in this place, ma ta 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 ta, re ke te te te, re ke te te te, re ke po shoto, ba to ko po te ke, re ke te po so ko to ba, le ke po yata, ma re ke te 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 te, e ke po ro ko pa kata. You will come back with miracle children. You will come back with miracle children. Your loved ones will come back with miracle children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for a few people. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is showing me some people. You've been so you are an adult, but you don't know what happens. You've been suffering from bed wetting. You wake up in the morning and you find out that you are easing yourself from your bed. There's, no, there's nothing to be embarrassed. Man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are that kind of person. Come and stand out here quickly. Forget about who is watching you. Nobody has that time. Let me tell you. There are people like that. A devil of darkness. Inside and outside. This is a, this is a demonic issue. There are people who... There are people. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. It's a spirit. It's not just about discipline. You can't stop it with discipline. I don't know why God is visiting that situation. Hallelujah. Let's take the next case. I'm seeing problems with your heart. Whether hole in your heart or any form of asthmatic condition. Please come out quickly. Hole in your heart or asthmatic condition. Please let's save time. Enlargement that devil is a liar. I've, I had an accident after the accident, they said my heart and enlarged, and there is an uh, infection. It, it, it will go back, Amen. be free right now. Amen. Heart return to your normal condition, infection go in the name of the Lord Jesus. As I lay hands on you, whatever the issue is, you'll be healed of it. Whether heart, asthma, be free right now. Please make sure you are coming out for the case we are going to mention. What are you coming out for? Did the doctors tell you? Yes. After the Sister, come. God will visit you. This has nothing to do with ulcer. Hmm? Where's your? You have an elder sister. Yes. Where is she? She's married. Is she married? Yes. What What's she doing? She's married, but the fourth child she gave birth to, she has been a problematic child. But this is six years now. She has not put her foot on the on the ground and she has not started again. And Can all I this while she has not given birth to child. Lay one hand on your chest. See whatever is happening to one person here is happening to you too. Are you listening to me? You must believe it. This lady with yellow that lady you 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 no no don't come out just lift your hands where you are both of your hands now are you pledging look at me father visit this girl the lord is showing me something about her lord visit this lady set her free It's like a mighty rushing wind. That spirit will not stand. It's looking like a knife is going through you. Set her free, Lord. What's wrong with you? Lay your hand again. 
Jesus as well. Thank you, Lord. Just lay your hands on him, let him know. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart. Okay, just hold my hands as I pray for you. You'll be free. You'll be free in the name of Jesus. Oh, you love God very well. What of you is not true? How true is it? <laughs> eh? Shall we see how true is it? Don't be seated. I break this addiction from your life. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Why did you say it's true? God is not just visiting you, but your family. You are in for it with God this time because it's, it's been multiple weeks. Some families have put some people in trouble they don't know. Parents in their innocence have gone to do things in a bid to try to help the Jesus Christ. Be made whole, be free. This is what is happening. This thing is all the way from Lagos. This is God setting this lady free. Sometimes we do things, parents, be careful. You go to places and do things believing you are helping your children. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. I release you in the name of Jesus Christ because God wants to use you in a mighty healing ministry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. My brother, God is calling you this night. When I make the altar call, before I finish, just run and come and stand here. Right? This is your night. Eh? There is no issue of running to God and then God brought you because we love you. Okay? You deserve You deserve You deserve The lifting of my hands to you. You deserve walk with me. You deserve. Don't be looking at me. Don't worry. Do you know what this means? this means? This is confusion. And this is why God is telling me this is how your life is. That's why I held you and I was walking. God wants to set you free from serious confusion. You are easily deceived. Anybody can tell you anything and that's why I was moving around. This does not, this is confusion. You get easily deceived. Anybody just say anything and they believe. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Both of your hands.
Satan, it's time up for you with this lady. Foul spirit. You will let this lady go. Release her. You can't stand it. I've seen you in the spirit. God is against you. This demonic thing must leave you. So pakapata. That you will have a strong heart. The Bible says, Be wise as serpents. What are you here for, my sister? Oh, while you were praying, you saw yourself on the ground. You decided to come and report yourself. <laughs> what do you think God is doing? Just stretch your hands like you are receiving something. Look at him. Truly, you will receive something. Just look at him. From heaven. Because you are receiving spirit. For you and for all your family members, may God visit you. God is not done. There is a fire that will burn you. The same thing will be happening to your family members. You need to be free. You love God, but there are all kinds of encumbrances. This night, this one is not just deliverance. This one is God catching you finally for him. Lord, take over her whole life from head to toe. Take over everything you can take over in this lady's life. Cares, go. Cares, go. Cares, go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray. Just leave her out because she's not recovering soon. This one is not just deliverance. God is taking, I have found my servant David. This is what is happening. When God finds a man, he doesn't leave you easily. He makes sure that you rise up with a hunger that nothing else. I trust God that this will happen to many people in this place tonight. Because I tell you, Pastor, a lot of people are in certain situations because they love God, but they have cares. So they, are, they, are, they easily become praise. It's not enough to, to be healed or to be delivered. Your heart must be with God for you to walk in sustainable victory. Many people like miracle service. They just run and come and take the miracle and then they run away. But let me tell you something. Your heart, come sister. Unto him, come. Who sits on the throne. Let God find you today. Are you hearing me? To Jesus, the Lamb, who was made. Hold my hand. Father, find a vessel in this lady. Do with her what only you can do. Ignite a fire in her spirit. Even as you have revealed to me, let this lady have a, a passion that cannot be multiplied. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual weakness leaves you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah. The Lord is healing my grain headache. The Lord is healing my grain headache. My grain headache. Intense my grain headache. Where's my neighbor? Is she here? She, she didn't come. 
please come. Tonight the Lord is going to visit you. See, many of you don't know that there's something called the season of God's visitation. Who is precious here? Precious. You are precious. Your real name, oh, the one precious. Make sure it's the name your father gave you, not the one you gave yourself. This man said, I must be precious. God, he must visit me. Many people threaten me with text messages during the miracles and say, See, God must visit me. Hallelujah. Lord is visiting you. Hold my hands. This demon of marital delay is going. You will go to a real deliverance, right? Come out! Come out of her! Sata Kabalata Bokosia. The fire of God is burning your whole body from head to toe. It's a foul spirit. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. It, I'm announcing it this night. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. That foul devil, come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out. Of her. Come out. Come out of her. Come out, you foul spirit. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted. This is a snake. Look at, look at what is happening. Look at what is happening. Are you seeing? Look at, look at this. This is what is responsible. Come out. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Just leave her. He cannot stand. He's going. Now, foul devil, you will release her. There is no hiding. The power of God is against you. You will go and return no more. And as you are going, I call forth your husband, not a man. Your husband. Your husband. Precious. All of you. All of you are no, no, I didn't ask my dream to come out. But since you came out, may God visit him. You have an elder brother? Where is he? He's in Abuja. Doing what? He's, no, he's doing us. He went for holiday. Which holiday? He went to Hosu. Tell him to come back. This is what happens to people. They, they just believe that bread is in Abuja. Let me tell you. Some of you want to run. You want to fake visa and run to Germany. Can I tell you something? The Bible says promotion comes neither from the east nor the west. Because some of you are already planning. You just believe. You say you are running. Where to say greener pastures? The Bible says he makes me lie down in the green pastures is the presence of God. Don't feel embarrassed. Okay? May the Lord visit you and visit your brother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a great teacher of the word. Huh? You will be a great teacher of the word. Something like light will hit your eyes right now and God will give you the spirit of revelation. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Open his eyes. You will be rich, oh. Because you have suffered, you will be rich. And look at me, I'm not just, this is not entertainment. I'm telling you the word of the Lord. Huh? Never forget the house of God. 
but you will be mightily blessed. How it will happen will even make people think you went to diabolic, you went and did diabolic things. May the Lord bring this to pass. You will see it happen. Some of you don't know that God will use you more than you have planned. You just think you will just be passive in the house of God and not do anything. No way. God knows how to get you. He will bring you for miracle service quietly. While you are thinking fashion and business and this, God is thinking fashion plus ministry. It's not just fashion, oh my dear, and beauty makeup is, is, is a serious call. your mother? Where? Do you believe God wants to visit your family? Tell your mother to forgive everybody that has done whatever. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Who offended her? It was one of our uncles. She said, Abba. To her, she said that he, she used to tell us as her children that, that he maltreated This thing her. since when she was small when till now, was small. this is what is stopping her breakthrough. Did you discuss this with me? Let her forgive, please. For as long as you keep somebody down, part of you will still be down. Is that true? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. All those who are called into the worship ministry, please, listen. If you come out here, I, I don't mean you like singing or you have a passion. No, I, I like singing. I'm not called into the worship ministry. You get my point? Please, don't be emotional about, uh, about it. Come and line up here quickly. Quickly. God wants to visit people. I don't know why. Worship ministry will be alive to see you if after this prayer. Worship ministry. Ah. Please think about it. Oh. <laughs> see, the worship ministry is not a hobby. Blessed is he. If there's no space, just stand where you are because fire, there's going to be a restoration of the Davidic order of worship. Believe it. I'm going to stand. Listen, as I walk around this place, the power and is, is fire that will come. It will catch many of you in a mighty way. Lord Jesus, as I begin to take it, take it right now, take it, fall, fall, take it, take it, take the fire, 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 take the fire. Take the fire. The Davidic order of worship. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Shaka balada bataka. Sing like angels. Receive it. It's coming on you. Lift up your hands, all of you that came to the front. My God, let it fall right now. My God, let it fall right now. To those standing at the door, let it fall, 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 take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, healing anointings, not talk or Take it, make sure you are receiving it. songs in your spirit. New songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Receive it. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. 
sons of power, sons of light, sons of grace, sons of healing. Consecration is the key. Consecration is the key to a life of true worship. Consecration. Thank God for the music dimension, but consecration is the key to a genuine life. You want to stand, some of you are already looking for money. If this is your ambition, you will not get this Davidic anointing. It doesn't happen that way. Your heart must pant after God and after his kingdom. You must stay in the place of training until he builds you. Oh, let it fall. Yes, Lord, let it fall. Let it fall. As it were in the days of Jehoshaphat. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall dimensions. Lord, release it from the east side of the temple. Let there be a releasing songs of power, songs of the spirit. Hallelujah. So that we will do mighty things for our God. Hallelujah. Please go back to your seat. Did you bring prayer requests? Please pass them quickly. Now, all those who are sick, inside and outside, please, I'd like you to come out quickly. While this is happening, be passing the prayer requests. Please, let's save time. Do it quickly. Mighty things are happening in this place. Man, de 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 bakoso so so de 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 koprato shikata zike te 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 prete te bele de bush. Please don't be in a rush this night, because what God wants to do, He has not finished. Zise zise na ne te te bele de bush. Please, you are sick. Come out, just ushers help and line them up, please. Please, quickly, quickly. This is a miracle service. As you come and stand, trust God for your miracle. Trust God for your healing, please. If you are doubting, just go back to your seat. Anybody who is, please play the instrument. Anybody, mic, music director, whoever. Malia Marako, Sebreti Kalabash. Those of you, those of you stay, make sure you are praying for them. As I lay my hands on you, I want to assure you, please believe God for real miracles. Some of you as you are standing because there is a healing river. As you are standing, you can't stand that majestic healing presence of the Holy Spirit. It's a majestic presence. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit, gentle touch. Help me, Pastor. Please help him with your mic. Is flowing. Jesus. Jesus. We, we believe. Make sure you pass Jesus. your prayer request. I tell you, there is a there healing is river. Healing in your there is a day. healing river. Yourself. Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is healing in your name. Almighty Father, 
in the name of Jesus.
crowd requests. Those outside, God will soon do something mighty. The Lord is showing me a vision right now. Feeling rain is here tonight. To lead you to the point of your knees. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see healing. I see breakthrough. I see miracle here tonight. This is probably one of the biggest miracles that will happen in this place tonight. Many of you don't know what a breakthrough is. The Bible says, and Abraham was old and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. This is what we call breakthrough. Hallelujah. Please, if you have not submitted your request, let me tell you where we got the revelation of this. The Bible says, and they sent a threat letter to Hezekiah. Remember? And the Bible says Hezekiah took the letter and came and dropped it on the altar and showed God the threatenings. And when that happened, there was wisdom that was revealed and they strategized worshippers. And the Bible says that they began to fight themselves in the camp. You will see a lot of confusion as we begin to pray for this thing. I don't mean confusion here. Confusion in the camp of the enemy. Whatever request you brought in this place, I really want, many of you don't know what God is doing this night. God is setting people on fire. We have a few minutes to make it. But God will visit you. We want you to come back with evidences that God touched you. See, when you get results, it's a consolation to your Christian work. Are you listening to me? Those outside, look at some of you standing. Standing right across, I see you. God cannot allow you to go back the same way. It's impossible. You didn't come to meet an idol. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet, everybody. It's a very prophetic moment right now. As we pray, I'd like to ask the ministers, Pastor Williams. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please, 
If you've not written your request, drop it. God is doing great things in this place. As we begin to pray on these requests. Hallelujah. Pray along with us, prophesy. Stretch your hands and pray. Tell the Lord, this is my request, O Lord. This is my request. Father, locate people. Locate people, O God. Locate cases. There are, there are difficult cases. Cases of barrenness. Deliverances for families. Lord, this is an altar you have sanctified. In one accord we pray. Just lay your hands across it as we release the virtue of perfection. Total breakthroughs. Academic breakthroughs. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, my request in this is in this place. Locate it. Those online, we are connecting with them also in the spirit. Those following us on all of our online channels. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Release breakthroughs to families. We sanctify these requests. These Egyptians will never be seen in families and lives again. Change stories, oh God. stronger than the strongest. You are mightier than the mightiest. You are the one who sits in the heavens and you made the earth your full stool. You are great. You are greatly to be praised. We thank you because of this opportunity that you have given unto us, oh God, to bring down our needs, our supplications, our requests unto your feet. You said in your word that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly far above all we ever ask, think or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that every need that has been penned down, every request that has been written down, you have already seen it. You have already seen it. And because you have seen it, we thank you because this, this request has seen by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we see you doing great things in this place tonight. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the testimonies that are coming out from this pen down written notes. We thank you for the testimonies coming out from this. In the name of Jesus, we bless you because we know that we'll come here next time to give you thanks of what you have done. Thank you, Lord, because every need, every need, every need here, we are met. We give you thanks. 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 Oh God, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. For we know that all things work together for our good. We give you thanks, we give you praise, for by faith we know your grace, we see us.
with God and as I pray, He gave me an anointing to bless, an anointing to release. Father, as many people are in this place, inside and outside, they came here hungry. And Lord, as I speak, on behalf of the government of heaven, let these words be so effectual. Let these words be powerful. Respond, O oh God. Every word I declare, let there be testimonies that will return. Every word that I'm about to declare to you, please, when I pray, I like you to shout amen with all your heart. Because I sense a very strong prophetic anointing coming upon me. I really want to speak from the depths of my heart. I don't just want you to believe it. I want you to return. The Bible says, and the 70 return rejoicing. Hallelujah. I want to pray for families. Lift your hands. Let's start with families right now. Please, I'd like you to shout amen with all your heart. Hallelujah. Every family represented in this place, every family, any curse, any ordinance of darkness, every yoke of bondage afflicting any family, I set you free now in the name of Jesus. I set families free now in the name of Jesus. I set families free now in the name of Jesus. I set families free now in the name of Jesus. Father, mother, brothers, sisters, be free. 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 Oh, you will come back with testimony. Anyone here, whether you or your family members, looking for a job. In the mighty name that is above all names, between today and the next 40 days, I place a demand upon the heavens. Receive miracle jobs. Receive miracle jobs. Receive miracle jobs for you, for your loved ones. You're on probation, you are trusting the hand, whatever it is. You're doing your project, things are difficult. Whatever academic issue tonight, in the name of the Lord God of Israel, the one who does wonders in this place, 
I declare, step into a season of academic victory. Step into a season of academic victory. I release you from any kind of bondage. I release you any kind of academic bondage. Be free. Be free. Be free. Amen. Hallelujah. All those who are due for marriage, whether you or your love, your loved ones. See, let me tell you in this place, once you are of marriageable age, you must marry. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? What did I say? Hallelujah. Somebody married, that's why you are here. You must marry. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Right now, I speak as a servant of the living God. I've prayed about it, but I will pray again. I pray. Some of you, you are a lady, you are pretty. But no man can come around. This is a curse. Tonight I pray that your wives and your husbands, those of you who are who have concubines and etc. When I make the altar call, run out here. Because this is what will stop you. You are entitled to only one wife. Say amen. You are entitled to only one husband. Say amen. The spirit of double dating dies here tonight. Leave another sister's husband to locate her husband. Leave another brother's wife to locate him. But I pray in the name of Jesus, before the end of this year, may there be fearful or inspiring miracle marriage. Take it. Take it. Before December 31st, 2013, come back with testimonies for yourself, for your loved ones. We supply the resources, we supply the grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any terminal disease in this place? HIV, whatever it is, hallelujah, infections, all kinds of satanic names, I declare right now, we curse it from the root in the name of Jesus. Anyone here whose genotype is SS or AS, in the name that is above all names, be changed, be changed to AA. I change it in the name of the Lord. Receive it. Receive a change of genotype. You will come back with testimonies. Believe it. Receive it. Everything he made, he made it beautiful. of demonic dreams and oppressions of darkness. Some of you see people sleep with you. Some of you see all kinds of demonic things. Molestations of darkness. I pray right now. The last time you had that dream or that experience, let it be the last time forever in your life. I said let it be the last time forever. Let it be the last time forever. Satan, I curse you. I cause every foul All those who are students and are in final year, I declare, those who need the mercy of God for their graduation, I pray right now, let policies be changed. Let something happen in your faculty that has never happened. We release you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy restoration. Whatever it is that you have lost, whether as a result of your past or mistakes, opportunities, 
graces, I pray that the God who regulates times and seasons, let that season come back to your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every lecturer in this place, or those who your parents are lecturers, stand for them, I want to speak. There are lecturers whose promotions are overdue. Is that true? Is that true? In the name that is above all names this night, we command. Even offices that are not available, we create it for them this night. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. The king sent for Joseph. Tonight, I connect you with supernatural destiny helpers that will take you from where you are to the next level. I connect you. I call for the helpers of your destiny. Financial helpers. Marital helpers. Career helpers. Spiritual helpers. Receive their ministry in your life in the name of Jesus. is doing here whether you or your whether building project whatever it is for you and for your families you are building a three bedroom flat that has taken over 10 years this is a curse i pray right now in the name of jesus let there be supernatural supplies the beds that brought food for the prophet i command may they locate your family i open up the heavens over your family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things God is doing in this season is preparing people for dimensions of prosperity that will scare people. Hallelujah. God is seriously looking for men who he will trust. These men will not just get well, they will be trained. The first thing you need is the staying grace. The school is not easy, let me tell you the truth. But happy are you when you pass through it because you will command wealth that will make you afraid. I pray for you. Every curse of poverty and lack. There are some of you who are kingdom financiers. The power of God will come upon you. Kingdom financiers. Kingdom financiers. Kingdom financiers. Kingdom financiers. Now I pray for everyone. This cause of poverty that is upon many lives and families that has closed the heaven over many people in the name of the Lord Jesus this night by the sure mercies of the God of David, I command your heavens to be open. I command your financial heavens be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. There are two things that bring prosperity, favor and wisdom. Hallelujah. Money comes through favor. It is preserved through wisdom. The Bible says through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding it is established. Through knowledge the rooms are filled with every treasurable thing. I pray. Let your hands receive wealth that only God can give. Inexplainable but undeniable. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, brothers, it is not by power. When it comes to prosperity, it is not by might. It's by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Two more things and we're up. 
I want to pray for favor. This is one of the things we enjoy in abundance. Hallelujah. I cannot tell you how the favor of God works. No man can explain it. But I know it works. I know it works. I am a testament. If you believe, I want you to believe. Many of you, you, you are used to suffering. You don't know what the favor of God can do. Some of our family members, what you need is the favor of God. Bible says in Isaiah 44 verse 2, it said they got not into their land. They got not the land by their possessions. Neither did their arms save them. But because you had, you showed favor towards them. Please believe. One encounter of favor. I tell you it can, it can, it can keep you in a position for a lifetime. Believe it. There is something called divine favor. What you see today is the evidence. We have never paid a dime for this venue. The last miracle service, I still don't know who paid for the venue. This is the favor of God. I want you to believe it. If you want to work for everything in your life, get set to die. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Favor. For many of you to come on you, this is what you need. I'm telling you, this is what you need. Families, what you need is favor, not stories. My God, my God, I pray in the name of Jesus, the favor that is upon Koinonia, I take it and I release it to your life. Take it now. 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 I activate favor. Favor. Favor with God, favor with man, favor, receive it, favor. Koinonia is called the place of intimacy and partnership with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You cannot come here tonight and not be on fire for God. You cannot be here tonight and not be on fire for the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to release grace that your spiritual life will stand strong and solid. Many of you, your prayer altars are dead. It's not because you don't love God. Hallelujah. Many of you, one leg in, one leg out. Last year, you were on fire this year. of our mothers, fathers, people at home, our prayer life, our word life. We are looking for things that only the word of God can give us. But Jesus said to Martha, he said, one thing is needful. One thing. One thing. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Alongside with this, I want to pray for the distribution of the gifts of the spirit. Hallelujah. Paul said, I long to come to you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. A powerless Christianity, and I'm not talking of just falling out. Christianity with results. Christianity with proofs. We have too many talkatives in the body of Christ. Inside or outside. Some of you have been crying and said, Lord, can't my life not have proofs? Can the sick be healed through my hands too? Can I not bless people and it will work for them? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I consider it to be an all-important impartation. Please get ready because it will come upon you. Different kinds of gifts of the Spirit. Stirrings of the Spirit. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus at the shout of that name. Some of you will, will be set on fire literally so that your spiritual life will be hot. So that God will use you and do wonders. 
Are you ready? Shout it with all your heart at the count of three. One, two, three. Take it. All of knowledge. Take it. Gifts of wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Inside and outside. The gifts of prophecy. Take it. Gifts of tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Receive it. I set your prayer life on fire. I set your prayer life on fire. Let the spirit of revelation fall. Spirit of revelation. The teaching anointing. Leadership anointing. Take it. Take it. Take it. Leadership anointing. Jesus. Leadership anointing. Jesus. Press to fast. Jesus. Press to pray. Jesus. Press to say no. To see. Press to say no. To destructive habits. Every result that we enjoy in this house may it be part of your life from today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I release entrepreneurial ideas. There is a spirit. Listen. I take from the abundance of grace that God has given me entrepreneurial ideas that will raise financial giants. Lift your hands, everybody. In the mighty name of Jesus, take it, take it, take it, take it. Jesus. Take it. fruitful life. May your life be a fruitful life. Amen. May your life be a fruitful life. Amen. May God bring results to your life Amen. to be a consolation to your Christian work. Any life that has not been experiencing results that you have never testified, may this be your month. Any life that has not been experiencing results, May this be your month. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity inside and outside. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, please keep standing everybody. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. Inside and outside, you are hearing my voice right now. You have seen the works of the Lord. It's time for you to get into a real relationship with God. Or for some of you, you have given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. But you found yourself derailing. Inside and outside, the Lord is speaking to you. Mother, father, whoever. I want you to leave your seat and come out here right now. I want to lead you and reconnect you back to the king of kings. The lover of your life. Inside and outside. Right now, leave your seat and come. Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. They are coming. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Our mother is coming. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Outside. Don't let the devil stop you. Mother, father, whoever. Yes, it's time I to surrender. surrender. Appreciate them. Oh, to him. 
doesn't matter what your past is. God can give you a new beginning. Don't allow the person you came with to stop you. This is the greatest miracle. Another Jesus. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. They are still coming. The Holy Ghost is convicting them inside and outside. Thank you, Jesus. We will connect to the maker of your life. I surrender more. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to celebrate you for your bold decision for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People close their eyes when they are about to get born again as if what they are doing is wrong. This is the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that we celebrate you. Some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Others have given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. I want to pray for you. The Lord loves you and he wants to make meaning out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you in front. I'd like you to say after me and mean it from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for dying for my sins. This night, I believe that Jesus is Savior and Lord. And I accept him. My name is in the book of life. I declare that I'm saved. The Holy Spirit is in me. Eternal life is mine. From today, I denounce sin and Satan and every past life. And I receive grace to live a victorious Christian life. My sins are washed away. It's a new beginning for me. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by your spirit. You brought them to bless. You brought them to reconnect them to the maker of their lives. My God, I pray that their salvation will last. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you do mighty things through their lives. I pray that many destinies will be blessed. The reason and the purpose for which they came to the earth, let it be discovered and maximized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that every encumbrance, everything that keeps you in the path that is not of God, you are free from it today. There is grace for you. You will enjoy a victorious fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We celebrate you. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers. They'll have your details. And we'll send you a text and get across to you. Pastor Jakes is not around. But we'll send, we'll make arrangements. And I'll be there by God's grace to see you. God bless you. Please, tomorrow, together with them, all those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, six on the dot, Please be at the chapel. I will be there to minister to you. Hallelujah. Six on the dot. Be at the chapel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up. We are closing. Thank you for waiting this long. All those who are worshipping with us for the first time, inside and outside, we love you and we believe God brought you here to bless you. I'd like you to jump on your feet and rush out here quickly. Celebrate them, Koinonia. If this is your first time, Please, inside and outside, you are special. We have a prayer for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All those who invited them, I pray that every good thing will come into your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Keep clapping. They are still coming. Thank you. Thank you, Sas. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Keep clapping until they come. They are special to us. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it.
see you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.